Hello and welcome to a little tutorial video. Today I want to talk about seascape photography again and I'll give you a quick overview about my workflow in the field. So how I make sure I come away with a good photo and also how I ensure that my equipment stays dry. So let's head right into it. When it comes to seascape photography, one of the most important things is to scout the area. Scout for compositions and make sure that when there's the right light, when you have a nice sunrise or sunset, you don't need to rush around and yeah, usually you don't find a good composition then. So use the times of the day when you can take a photo or when the weather is not nice and yeah, scout the area. Look for compositions and also make sure you are safe when you're out there in the dark because climbing around on those rocks when you haven't done so before can be dangerous. So it's good to get to know the area. And yeah, I'm now using a few hours of the day to scout different compositions along this island here. And when then there's the light, I will go there and know exactly where to set up. Yeah, and another thing to look out for when you're at the coast is you have to look how the water behaves. So how are the waves and also you get to know the tides. So for example, now it's incoming tide. So we're nearly, I think half a meter from high tide now. And I can see that the rocks here aren't submerged yet. But at high tide, for example, those will be submerged. Whereas on low tide, I'll have much more rocks to include in the composition. So this is also important to look out for when you're trying to shoot seascapes. Check the tide tables and then yeah, look at the composition you want to shoot and yeah, see what's included there and what might be hidden beneath the water later. So when the scouting's done and you found some promising area where you find some compositions, the next thing you do is, as usual, you put the tripod away and just explore with the camera alone because this gives you much more flexibility when you're looking for compositions. So this is what I'm doing now, but since I'm at the coast and here's a little beach, I try to not walk through my composition. So if I just start walking around everywhere, I'll have my footsteps in the composition possibly. So I start a little further away and yeah, first start looking for compositions in the distance. And if I don't find them here, I can move closer. So once you've found your composition, the next step is to set up. And I usually do this a little farther away from the water. In this case, I have a composition which is far away from the water, so I do it anyway. But if I plan to shoot right in the waves, I set up my camera well away from the waves because I also leave my backpack there and yeah, I don't want to get wet while I set up my camera. So I usually do this with enough time away from the water. So first the tripod, then I'll put the camera on it and what I also need is the cable release because when I'm shooting at the coast I want to time my exposures normally. So I'll use this and for this shoot here I go for a vertical. So after putting in the cable release, I just turn the camera and I'm using an L bracket. So this is very easy. And after I've done those basic steps and before moving in, I put the filters in place because this is also something I don't want to fumble around with when I'm close to the water. So I usually do this first, 
So I put in the polarizer, then the filter holder, which sometimes takes a little longer. And now finally, for this scene, I'll be using a 0.6 soft edge from Kaze. I also put this in. And yeah, I won't need, uh, I don't need the filter, so I leave them at the backpack. I only grab a lens cloth and then I'm basically ready to go and go into the scene, adjust the composition and start shooting. But this is the basic setup. So now it's time to take a few photos here. And yeah, this scene, I have to say, it's not a typical dynamic seascape. So I'm far off the water's edge, but I can still explain my usual workflow and what is important. And one thing that is important, if you're shooting close to the water and maybe have water rushing around your tripod is that you, be, you are aware that the water rushing around the tripod will have it sink. So the first thing I do usually is I have the lower legs extended and then I push down the tripod into the sand. So usually one or two waves coming around the tripod and I'm pushing down will have it completely stable. And that's also why it's important to extend the legs because otherwise you'll have sand in the locks and you don't want this. But in this case, it's not important. So there will be no water up here and yeah I can take a little more time otherwise I always have to be aware of waves coming in and I might even have to remove my tripod very fast but today as I said it's easy the next step is if I have time I try to focus at the background and quickly take the photos so maybe even with exposure uh, multiple exposures for HDR after this shot, I focus right where the action is in the foreground. And yeah, then I use the timer or the cable release and wait for a wave rushing in. And when it flows back, I usually click the shutter. And with the exposure times between 0.3 and maybe yeah, one second, it usually works very nicely with the water moving into the scene. And this creates some nice dynamic and yeah, after this explanation, I'll now take the photos. Although here, as you can see, there's no action going on. But I'll make sure to find another suitable scene the next days and film it for you also. So you see how the normal workflow will look. So I hope you liked this little tutorial and it will help you on your next seascape shoot. And yeah, if so, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe. And also if you have questions or suggestions, just leave a comment. See you.